Calaroga Shark Media. Oh man, let's get right. Wait, where's the crowd? Crowd, where are you? Oh, there they are. What happened there? That was weird. Anyway, get your popcorn out and let's get right to this today. I want you guys to pay attention. Originally, when I did the script, Jon Stewart was the top story. There's so much fighting today. Wait till you hear how long it takes me to get to Stewart. Let's start with Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb was on the 5150 show. I want to let his words speak for themselves, but I did have to make some edits here. He said a lot of things you would bleep, but you'll get the gist. Dave Chappelle be bombing. I'm just keeping it real, dog. <laughs> I have watched, whenever they say, hey, everybody, guess what? Special guest, Dave Chappelle. I'll be like, oh, damn. <laughs> it's going to be hot garbage for at least an hour, hour, maybe two. I'm just keeping it real, but he needs to understand you throwing your weight around too much, man. Standing up there smoking with them irregular shirts on, bombing. All the time. Dave Chappelle is absolutely great in movies. Great. I didn't say good. I said great. Nutty Professor, them scenes where he was in them movies with Martin. When Dave Chappelle is in a movie, man, Dave Chappelle killed. We was talking about it before we came on. The Chappelle show was so good and entertaining the Chappelle show, they were selling it in the barbershops. It's a TV show. Yeah, yeah. They were selling the TV yeah. show in the barbershops. Give Dave Chappelle his flowers. But stand up. This man has so much power because of what he's done in movies and TV that he can go in any comedy club. They're going to put him up because he's Dave Chappelle. And I promise you, this man is about to do a say no to comedy speech for as long as he up there. It's just nobody has the courage to say nothing because it's Dave Chappelle. But Dave Chappelle be bombing. Now, I've watched Dave Chappelle's specials. Out of every five specials, two of them are good. All right, according to TMZ, Donnell Rawlings was up on stage at the Laugh Factory. Corey Holcomb was supposed to follow him, started heckling him. Donnell told Holcomb that he was a provocateur who was only trying to incite people. There's a bit of an argument you can hear. They get back and forth into it. <laughs> Corey questions Donnell's street cred. Donnell is not happy that Corey implies that uh, if you have made three movies in Hollywood, you had to uh, do a favor, you know what I mean, for someone in the business. Anyway, let's listen to the clip best we can. All right, listen, listen. This be fair. Fair conversation. No, 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 no. Let's be fair. Let's be fair and real. You say you keep it 100. You know how I get that. How? 32. I rip. You rip mics? I rip. You, 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 how can you ever see me bomb? Anybody. And you ask anybody that don't know me, I keep it gangsta. No, you trying to say I'm a bum. I ain't no bum. No, wait. You know what you're doing now? You're a provocateur. You know how to incite people. People look at you. Ain't nothing. If you was at the mall, they'll put you out with your hot dog in your head. And guess what? And guess what? And guess what? You can say what you want to say. You can say what you want to say. You calling me a mild comic is totally off. More fighting. Eddie Griffin has called Shannon Sharp's podcast club Shay Shay. He's referred to it as, this is uh, Eddie saying this, not Johnny Mac. Eddie called it Club Gay Gay. He has been joking about Shannon Sharp's sexuality. I'm going to have to quite paraphrase here. There are some N-words. I'll substitute in the word fellow. And I will not attempt to match Eddie's speech pattern, so I'll do this as Johnny Mac. But the transcript more or less reads... And Club Shay Shay, yeah, Shay Shay, gay, gay. I don't give an F that that fella's gay. That fella sitting there with tight pants on with his stuff all up in Cat's face. You can tell by how that fella drinks that he is gay. He kept saying, now, now, Cat. Those are um, favor lips, fella. I have cleaned that up. That mf -er had favor on them lips. Don't know fella drink like that. Hope that made sense to you. I cannot do it in its original form at all. 
Shannon Sharp said, they're using the same joke, but at some point it's going to get old and people are going to get tired of y'all saying Shannon's gay and Shannon this. You're going to have to get back to telling jokes. Distractify looked into a rumor that Bert Kreischer was arrested. He was not. They write, news of Bert's jail time was trending for a moment. Let's break down what really happened. I didn't even see this trending, but okay. In an episode of Two Bears, One Cave, Tom Segura revealed that Bert was, quote, doing a little bit of time during the recording. Tom didn't share any details about why Bert would have been arrested, but he extended words of support to Bert, saying, hopefully his legal matters resolve themselves. I know he has the best attorneys you can hire. He's also got a lot of health trouble, so they're taking care of him in the medical ward of the jail. Tom did that deadpan and apparently fooled some people on TikTok. One person commented, I can't wait to hear Bert's stand-up that comes from this experience. Another fan wrote, Bert's probably so confused why everyone thinks he's in jail. That's fun. The Daily Beast went with the headline, Why does Shane Gillis keep promoting these Holocaust deniers? Here we go. Johnny Mac's been waiting for Shane Gillis controversy. This ought to start it up. The Daily Beast writes, When SNL introduces host Shane Gillis, the comedian who was hired and quickly fired from the cast in 2019 over his history of racist, homophobic, and transphobic comments on February 24th, some viewers will inevitably find their way back to his podcast. Those who keep listening will eventually meet Bill McCusker, the brother of Gillis's co-host Matt, and Andrew Pasella, their longtime friend. Those two have appeared nearly 20 times on Matt and Shane's secret podcast. Currently, Patreon's top-ranked podcast with more than 80,000 paid subscribers. Boy, uh, let's do the math on that. Hold on. I'm on uh, Graftreon, who show Matt and Shane having 82,552 paid members. The estimated earnings per month are somewhere between 213,000 and 578,000 per month. Uh, let's just say each of the 82,000 members are paying $1. That'd be 82 grand a month. I'm going to go to their Patreon. Boy, don't get mad at me when I run a triple commercial in the mid-roll, guys. <laughs> okay, there are grandfathered pours for a dollar a month. That is sold out. The professional class is $5 a month, or you can join the Divine Order of the Dogs for $10 a month. So if we do lazy math, 80,000 times 5 is 400 grand times 12. Not a bad living. However, back to Bill McCusker and Andrew Pasella, they are Sandy Hook truthers. Johnny Mac has no tolerance for that whatsoever. I am not going to pull any punches there. No tolerance for Sandy Hook truthers. According to the Daily Beast, those two are Sandy Hook truthers arguing in two separate episodes of Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast that the slaughter never happened. Disgusting. They are 9-11 truthers who believe per Pasella that the Israelis knew about the attacks in advance and may have orchestrated them to take over our media and destroy our country. Jeez. They believe in Pizzagate, writes the Daily Beast. Some more uh, yucky things I don't want to share. In one episode, McCusker, the brother, uh, apparently asked, Do I want Hillary Clinton to be eating effing children with her lover because she's a lesbian? No, but it's where it brought us. Oh, wow, I had no idea. According to the Daily Beast, in a different episode, Pasella, uh, speaking of the Holocaust, says, Prove to me that it happened. Show me, historians. Why are they lying, dude? Why are all these so-called survivors making up stories? It was a hallucination. How about the actual footage of the showers, bro? Yikes, wow. Quoting from the Daily Beast here, Pasella keeps going, questioning whether we were the bad guys in World War II. Quote, Why do they keep making movies where, like, oh, dude, we saved Private Ryan? Skipping ahead a few paragraphs. Boy, John, this is a fun podcast today, huh? Shane Gillis jumps in and says, okay, see, this is what I'm worried about. The genuine anti-Semitism. The Daily Beast writes, he tells the duo they have a problem and he believes Pacella is behind it. Pacella says, I'm not behind it. We just collectively one day were like, let's figure out if this absolutely happened. Gillis responds, stop, stop, stop. I'm doing the audio on this. There's no pauses. There's no take backs. The Beast says the duo's Holocaust denial did not dissuade Gillis from welcoming him back to the podcast many more times. Yikes, that's all icky, isn't it? Yikes, sorry it took you there, guys, but um, boy, that uh, really set some context for Shane Gillis hosting SNL this week. Let's do a quick palate cleanser here. Here's Joe Coy being really, really mean to Taylor Swift. Uh, the big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, on the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. Woo, Joe Coy, that is so vicious. All right, check your watch. How far into this are we when I finally got to? John Stewart was back on The Daily Show Monday. He spent most of this show responding to the blowback he got for hosting the show the previous week. John said, the response to the first show last Monday was universally glowing. Okay, maybe not universal. And he showed some screenshots of critical tweets. 
John said, everything on Twitter gets a backlash. I've seen Twitter tell Labradoodles to go F themselves. I just think it's better to deal head on with what's an apparent issue to people. I mean, we're just talking here. It was one show. It was 20 minutes. I did 20 minutes in one show. But I guess as the famous saying goes, democracy dies in discussion. But look, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. It was never my intention to say out loud with what I saw with my own eyes and then brain. John was good for the ratings, not only his night, but for the rest of the week. Jordan Klepper hosted last week. For February 13th through the 15th, Klepper got 461,000 same-day viewers. That's the highest mark in more than two and a half years. That includes the tail end of the Trevor Noah run and the year of nobody hosting the show. That 461 compares to John getting 970 on Monday. Uh, That drags the average up to 588. So, for example, if you combine my audience with John Stewart's audience, we're also averaging around 588. (laughs) The highest rate of the random year of guest hosts was Al Franken. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to say that. He got 440,000. Klepper and Roy Wood got 425. No other guest host averaged better than 400,000. Trevor Noah's final 10 weeks drew about 412,000 per night. Desi Lydic is your host this week through Thursday. John Oliver is back. And in the past, they used to show most of the show on YouTube. There was a while where I didn't have HBO and I would watch. Basically, they would post everything but the opening desk bit. They would post the long story. Uh, But an HBO spokesperson has confirmed to 9to5 Google that HBO Max is now delaying when last week tonight is available on YouTube. The spokesperson says the hope is those fans choose to watch the entire show on Max. You now won't get the videos until Thursday. John Oliver himself hopes they change their mind, unquote. Interesting change because they've been doing it the other way for 10 years. The big news out of this week's show, John Oliver has offered to pay Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas a million dollars a year if he resigns from the Supreme Court. I tried to pull the clip, but John took about five minutes to finish off the joke. But you get the gist. John says, that's the offer. A million dollars a year, Clarence. And a brand new condo on wheels. He had shown a picture of a pretty fancy truck. All you have to do is sign the contract and get the F off the Supreme Court. A lot of Fs today, John. Uh, The clock starts now. 30 days, Clarence. Let's do this. The Guardian points out that Supreme Court justices make $298,500. All right, Mitch Hedberg fans, I had the most amazing moment. I was at Habit Burger with my daughter. She asked, what kind of soda do they want? And I said, Dr. Pepper. And she said, they don't have Dr. Pepper. So I looked and there was Mr. Pibb. Now, if you're a Hedberg fan, you know where I'm going there. This made me laugh so much that I sent a note to Lynn Shawcroft, who is Mrs. Mitch Hedberg, just to tell her that this happened to me in real life. So my daughter goes, I don't know what Mr. Pibb is. And I just said, dude didn't get his degree. You either get the story I just told or you're like, what the F is Johnny Mac talking about? But if you got it, it was wonderful because I got to use the line. Erin from Australia went to buymeacoffee.com. She shot me a note, and boy, Erin is correct. She writes, I always feel like the pronunciation police, so I'm buying you a coffee this time to say Lisa, Lisa Trigger, pronounced Lisa, smiley face emoji. Also, Survival of the Thickest got picked up for second season, FYI. In case you're not familiar with Survival of the Thickest, this is John talking, not Erin. It's a comedy drama TV series co-created by Michelle Bateau, based on a memoir of the same name. The series stars Michelle Bateau as a plus-size woman attempting to rebuild her life after a breakup. So Aaron and I exchange notes on the side. Uh, I appreciate it. Every time I say anyone's name on this podcast, I'm terrified I'm going to get it wrong. Like, I'll look at John Oliver and I'm like, is it Oliver? How do you say it? I do this on every single name. I'm sure I get seven wrong a week, especially with newer comedians that maybe I haven't seen in person. But specifically to Lisa, and I almost did it again, I have it in my brain to make sure I check my pronunciation on that. Because I used to say Liza, then I said Lisa, and then when it came up recently, I looked at it and went, oh yeah, don't mess this one up. And I, of course, did. So, Aaron, you keep those notes coming. You're like Lieutenant Savick in Star Trek Two. When I'm like, there's no such regulation, you give me a sexy Vulcan eyebrow and go, oh yes, there is. Lisa Trigger. Aaron, thank you for the note. Kirstie Alley's really cute in Star Trek Two. I mean, let's just be real. All right, one more wacky one from TMZ. Larsa Pippen, former NBA star Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. You may recall Scottie Pippen was on the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan. I hopefully don't have to explain who Michael Jordan is. Larsa Pippen, Scottie's ex-wife, and Marcus Jordan, the son of Michael, they're in a relationship. And TMZ says that that relationship was put in the crosshairs during a stand-up routine over the weekend. 
Comedian Greg Wilson with the sleigh. This is great. Larsa Pippen is here with Marcus Jordan. Looks at Larsa and says, you're a legend. You're the only person that's ever managed to F up both Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan at the same time. You're basically the greatest New York Nick of all time. You should be in their ring of honor. <laughs> TMC says, I got some laughs, but the vibe was a bit awkward. That is a feisty F-loaded edition of Daily Comedy News. There was so much today. I bumped two controversies to tomorrow. I can tell you already tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun. So if you enjoy the program, tell a friend about it or share it on social media. And if I got any of the names wrong, if you're like, it's not Larza, it's Larza. Whatever I did wrong today, you can tell me about it. You don't even have to go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. You can just shoot me an email. My email is in the show notes and uh, it's john at the shark deck .com. And I'm always, 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 always happy to interact with listeners. Love hearing from you guys. Thank you for listening and I'll see you tomorrow.